Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Paul and earlier you saw Max on the gun. So today we're gonna to look at one of our favorite pistol manufacturers, CZ. To be more specific, we're looking at the Polymer line, their P10F series. And since we're gonna be putting an optic on this, we're working with optics ready model, we're gonna use one of the newer pistol red dots, the Steiner MPS. So to see how both of those work out, we're gonna take a close look at them right now. So let's go. Controls and handling. So the first thing I noticed about this full-size pistol is how big it is. At eight inches long, it's just as big as the Staccato P that we recently featured in our videos. And thanks to its equally large magazines, it's actually taller than the Staccato. So if you put your hand on it, and I have medium-sized hands, you're gonna notice that you're still gonna have a bunch of space left over on the grip. So no matter how big your hands are, you're gonna have plenty of purchase on this pistol. And since we're talking size, it's always a little bit of a chore to find holsters. But uh, if you've been following the channel, you know that we really love using Safari Land GLS holster just because it fits so many pistols. I'll leave links below if you're interested. And while we're talking grip, the factory version does come with its own stippling and it's everywhere. However, uh, some people have complained it is a little bit too aggressive. We elected to have an aftermarket grip mod for our CZ. The, the one that's on there right now is the Brecky Custom Silicone Carbide Grip, which is almost like cheating because basically it, your hand literally sticks to this pistol. Check out their website, you'll see the different options and I'll leave a link in just in case you guys are interested. And in my opinion, it makes a big difference. So traveling up from the grip, the mag release did change from the first P10, so it was nowhere near as stiff as it once was. And from our experience, the mag release uh, operates really easily. It, the, all the mags drop free without any friction. But if we're talking stiff and hard to operate, uh, we want to talk about that slide release. Well, really, CZ does not call it a slide release in their manual. They call it a slide stop, and there is a reason. Because if you try to release that slide using this, this button, it's not going to work for you. It's almost impossible. So basically, you're going to have to use slingshot method if you want to release a slide on this gun. And while we're talking about that slide, it does look really nice with these uh, angled slide cuts. And on that slide, toward the back, since this is the optics ready model, we do have a filler plate in there. And that's what ships with the gun. So you do not get any optics plate on this. We'll talk more about plates in our next section coming up. Sighting systems. So for sights, let's quickly talk about the included iron sights because they're actually quite good. For the rears, you got a black square notch with some checkering to cut down on glare. And out front, you have a kind of a dual purpose sight. You have an excess tritium lamp for low light and it's surrounded by this large orange ring. So this dual approach works out quite well because you can just use the orange circle as a big fiber optic sight for fast shooting. Although it's a little bit big for distance, so you'll be glad you opted for a red dot instead. And speaking of that dot, Steiner is known for making duty grade rifle scopes. You can see here that they took some of that same approach with this pistol dot. They made it all metal to completely enclose the emitter. We mentioned earlier that CZ doesn't come on a plate, so you will need to buy a separate CZ P10 aim point acro plate. We found one, I'll leave a link below if you're interested. So once you have it mounted, how does it look? The glass looks so clear for a pistol dot. It's basically like Steiner took their European rifle glass and just cut it down to size for this MPS. There's absolutely no distortion of the targets toward in the center or around the edges. So the targets actually appear as 1X as they should be. And as far as dot size and intensity, I think the 3.3 MOA dot is a good compromise between speed and precision. And on the super bright desert day, you can see that at its top setting of eight, it's more than enough for a really rapid sight pickup. Speaking of the quality of that glass and an emitter, uh, we saw no glare or reflections from the sunlight. The specs say you can expect 13,000 hours of a single 1632 on the medium setting. So that's still on the low end of battery life compared to an acro or a hall sun. 
Lastly, I like how the controls are laid out, especially with the top mounted battery cover. It's easy to access. It's pretty big, so you can do it with a coin. And also on the back, you have the adjustment knobs, which are that offer positive feedback. So you can actually feel when the clicks are moving. So that's great when you're zooming. And the side brightness buttons, they also feel clicky and they register your input. Although they're a little bit small and it's kind of weird as far as shapes. And it's like these little angles, these trapezoid angles are kind of funky. It's, it's like, Steiner looked at the aim point and said, hey, there's all those curves. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go all angles, angles, angles. It's. It's. Performance. So when it comes to performance, the first thing we need to think about is the trigger. When we think about CZ, they, those guys make some of the best triggers on, in the business. So even for a duty grade polymer gun, I think the P10F follows in that tradition. It's a straight profile trigger, which has a really smooth take up with only very light stacking at the end. You'll definitely feel it when it starts to stack, but it's just very small. And once you get to the wall, it's a really short press and a clean break. And on the reset, it feels exactly the same, except in reverse. So you'll have a short crisp reset and you're ready to go again. I think the trigger pull measures around five pounds, which is very good for a duty type trigger. Now, one place where a good trigger really helps you is bench rest accuracy. We shot some uh, locally produced 115 grain reloads out of this four and a half inch barrel. And we shot this two inch group at 25 yards. This is really excellent performance for a stock barrel with stock irons. Now, if you're coming off the bench and shooting fast, I think that's really where the pistol really performs. I don't know if it's the high grip angle or the trigger guard undercut, so you can put your support hand a little bit higher, or, or it's just a, like the really big grip with the brecky silicone grip. But when you have this polymer in your hands, it's really easy to shoot flat. One last note when it comes to performance is you always got to think about the magazines. And the magazines that come with this are really excellent. Uh, they're steel magazines. They're, you get two of them. They hold 19 rounds each, 41 rounds basically at your disposal. And you can also buy a 21 round version with extended base pad for basically the same price as the factory 19 rounders. And that's really awesome. So when you're actually loading this, uh, the, uh, the mag well is not flared, but just based upon the geometry of the magazines and the, the, the size of the grip, we never had any problem with loading. And as far as reliability, we had a ton of flying dust everywhere during the shoot and both the gun and the mags got kicked over, but they just kept going and going and going. All right, everybody, we're back. So what's our final verdict on the CZ P10F with the Steiner MPS? Pistols can be really similar to optics in one way in that they can be really subjective. You can have uh, two shooters with completely different results. Well, when I shot this CZ, I liked it. I really liked the Ergos compared to my defaults for the Glock 17 and MP9. But when Max picks up this pistol, I don't know why that is, but this pistol absolutely flies in his hands. And considering you can pick up one of these pistols for a little bit under $600, and what you get with it, you get a reliable polymer frame gun, you got this nice CZ trigger, you got really reliable and high capacity magazines, and they're affordable. It seems like a no brainer to me that this is probably one of the best polymer guns out there. And that's the final verdict, hope it helps. And if it helps you, please consider sharing this video so this small channel can keep growing. And as always, if you're interested in equipment, I'll leave it in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time.